I am your host, Naila Harvey of nharv.com. And as you can see, I have my very first guest today, Lady A, a.k.a. Avery Atkinson. Right, so you've gone through the drafting step in that phase. Um, now it's time to revise because it's a process. So there are different steps in the process. What do we do <laughs> when it comes to revising? So revising is when it's time to improve your writing. Um, what is one <laughs> advice that you give for aspiring authors when they are in the revising phase? I'm going to start by saying, this is so simple, guys. Lean in. Read what uh, you wrote. <laughs> yes. Read what you wrote. Like, it's that you don't need anybody else. It's that simple. Read what you wrote. That's my advice. What's your advice for those who are like, uh, oh I mean, is there any other advice than that? I mean, really? Um, there is literally a scientific word where when you're reading, your brain fills in the blanks. Uh, so what happens is while you're typing, you're lo visually looking at it, thinking of what you want to say, typing, and your brain is filling it in and you never wrote the word. Huh. So when you go back and reread, you're like, uh oh, wait a minute, that's not what I meant. You know, of course there's autocorrect and things like that when you're on Facebook and Twitter, but your brain will fill in the in the blanks, which is why, yes, you should reread your own writing, but then you need to give it to somebody else. Right. I can't tell you how many times people have been like, What did you want to say here? And I'm like, You could not tell me that I did not write <laughs> write it correctly because my brain had filled it in, mm -hmm. right? So um going back to reread, if you start practicing that again, that budget, if you if you budget little right if, if you know you want to go to the movies at the end of the week okay let me budget let me skip starbucks this day and then i'm gonna take a sandwich from home next day so that i can spend this 18 dollars so i can have popcorn while i'm at the movie right that same concept you know i'm gonna spend a little time rereading my facebook posts i'm gonna spend a little time rereading my twitter now i'm training my eye to see okay there are certain mistakes that I continually make when writing. There are certain things that, you know, will trip me up. There are certain words. I'm sure you probably have three of them right on top of your head that trip you up yep. every time. You'll begin to see yourself in how you write. Mm. So then that way, when you're rereading, now when you're on book number two, right, you know what to look for. So yeah, I would definitely say um, start that revision process small. Oh my if you God. try to reread it and revise it from a different perspective, you can make sure you aren't, I call it ghost filling, where you're filling in context from your personal experience that the reader may not have. Because huh. sometimes that happens. It reads well, it's grammatically correct, but the context is confusing because they haven't had your experience. So in that revision process, you want to have a different set of eyes other than just your own on it. I love everything you said because it brings us right into the fourth step, which is editing. And that's when it's time to make things correct. And you said something that was very, very, very valuable. Sometimes it can be grammatically correct, but it doesn't mean that it is um, the development that you want it to that you wanted it to be it can be off mm -hmm. contextually this is why yeah. we have different types of editors people we have developmental editors we have line editors we have copy editors and then we just have plain proofreaders don't fool yourself into thinking that you <laughs> only need a proofreader proofreader is mm. the last step of the editing mm -hmm. that's good last step that they're just checking to see okay did you did you cross your t's did you dot your i's no you probably need help um, with grammar as well. Some people, they need help with outlining the structure of the yes. story. That's a yes. good editor. Yes. So I want you guys to get into the habit of revising for yourself. Revising, that's your part, okay? That's mm -hmm. before you pass it on to the editor. Is it legible? Is it readable? Okay, I don't even know if that's a real word, but can other people read it outside mm -hmm. of it? <laughs> <laughs> and if it is, then you pass it on to the editor. Please, as a book editor, do not give it to us if you haven't even read over it because there are some um, errors that you can probably probably fix, you can fix before you give it to us. Um, mm -hmm. Five steps. First step is pre-writing. That's the time to think. Um, what do you want to say? What's your budget? The analogy that we've been using. Drafting, time to write. Are your thoughts organized? Revising is the third step, and that's the time to improve your writing. Um, have you read what you wrote? Have you? Um, the fourth <laughs> step is editing. That's the time to make things correct. And I'm looking on my computer, YouTube. And then the last step, publishing. Here we are. Time to share. 
I talked about mm -hmm. this a little bit in the beginning because that was a part of setting a goal, but it all comes full circle if you do things, you know, strategically. So mm -hmm. this is where I want Avery to really talk about what she does and how we work together. My expertise is to help you get your book written. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm helping you uh, get those ideas from your head. Like I've said throughout this YouTube, throughout this podcast, I'm helping you get the ideas from your head and onto paper, pen, whatever your platform is, whatever your medium is. But there is another step, guys. You actually have to publish the book and you have to share. <laughs> share includes marketing and promotion. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to buy your book if they don't know about it. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> Avery closes out by saying, um, <laughs> are giving advice. Oh, Jesus. Um, on the publishing process as it pertains to marketing and promotion and encourage the aspiring authors out there mm -hmm. and writers who feel like it's one and done after you hit publish. And so it's, it's not hard. People make it hard. As we've been using it, or I've been using this analogy this whole time um, about budgeting, right? And so we've made the investment. So now that we made the investment, we have ROI, return on investment. That means if I put in $50, there's an expectation to get at least $100 back right. because I put in 50. Or well, matter of fact, at least the 50 back, right? I want to at least get back what I put in. And if I pull back some more, that's awesome. We call that ROI, return on investment. And, and that's in the business world. That's anywhere, ROI. Um, it should be the same for your book. Well, if you don't market, if you don't publish, if you don't take that last step, then you're not going to get a return on your investment. And that's where I come in. Um, you want to make sure that in this budget plan, your last investment, your last big investment is going to give your biggest return on investment. The biggest part of this is marketing. You have to market your book. I, when I'm dealing with clients who want to write books, I definitely send them to Naila for the editing portion. She's an amazing book coach. She's just awesome at what she does. I'm on the creative side. I can help you get that idea and figure out how you want to say what you want to say, but saying it correctly so that we know what you're talking about. That's all not all day long. Right. And I also don't have patience. <laughs> but um, the marketing part though, this is what I tell my clients. It is like birthing a baby. Okay. The book writing process, you're taking your vitamins, you're going to your checkup. That would be going to see Dr. Nye. You're going to see Dr. Nye. She's like, oh, your baby's turning, it's growing, the heartbeat's working. Yes. Okay. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to increase your veggies because the baby's blood pressure is a little bit low, so we can fix it. Right. So you've gone through the specialist, you've gone to your Lamaze clash, you're ready to push this book out. Yes. It's time to birth the book mm -hmm. and you've got nobody to drive you you've got nobody to meet you at the hospital you don't know which doctor you're going to see because Nye's job is the OBGYN if you all know OBGYNs don't deliver babies they're in the room but they don't deliver babies yep you only have an OBGYN you don't have a, a primary practitioner what's gonna you about to get this birth in your in your hallway <laughs> like because you have not done what was necessary to push this baby out Marketing is like having a baby shower. It is having someone to drive you. It is having someone to meet you at the hospital and hold your hand while you squeeze because there are going to be times where you want to quit. Trust me. There are going to be times where you want to quit. And that person will squeeze your hand and say, no, keep pushing. You can get this out. And once the baby is born, how are you going to get home? You need a baby carriage. You need pampers when you get home. You need food. You need money to pay this baby, right? This is where marketing comes into play. The book is the baby, but all the things around it so that the baby grows, so that it's nurtured, so eventually it runs and stands on its own because that should be your end goal. Your end goal should be a book that is running and functioning on its own. If you were to drop it tomorrow, your children can still eat off of that book. That should be your end goal, right? So um, your marketing and your branding of your book, because marketing and branding are two different things. That's a different show for a different day, but your marketing and branding should work hand in hand after this book is birthed to carry it to the next level to grow and nurture the baby so if you just write your book and put online hey i wrote a book guys come check it out you your mama and maybe your best friend that's baby. and if you got a baby that's baby. it you're not gonna make any return on that investment mm -hmm. but you want people who don't know you 
to read your book. Mm -hmm. I am still, my first book was, uh, again, my first published book um, was Awesome Truths, Confessions of a Believer. I am still getting inboxes today for people I do not know whose lives have been changed. Now, for me- did you publish that book? When? Oh, gosh. uh, 2014. 2014. And it's 20. So, yes. Yeah, it's 2020. Mm -hmm. And I've published a couple books since then. Um, I I find out and I hear from people who have printed out my book on singleness and they print it out, highlight it. I mean, they it's like a Bible <laughs> that, they, that they're going through their single journey with. Here's the thing. My end goal has always been, I want my words to outlive me right? That has always been my goal. And so when I market it, I don't just market it to my friends on Facebook. I market it to Instagram. I figure yeah. out, okay, what is my hashtag? Who is my niche market? Who is my book avatar? Which means what does a person look like who gets my book? There's nothing worse than when I'm talking to a client and I'm like, okay, who's your book for? And they're like, everyone. And I'm like, no, mm -mm. That's we got to go back to the drawing board because yep. That ain't it, sis. Mm -hmm. And sir, that, that's not it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that is in a nutshell. Um, when you are ready to publish, you are not ready to publish until you're ready to market. Ooh. And on that note, we are going to close. Um, thank you so much, Avery, for joining sure. us today. Thank you for having me. Yes. You have been an awesome very first guest. So I'm going to ask Avery right now if she would be willing to come back on the Look Better and Write Writing podcast and also the In Harv YouTube channel. Don't, don't say you know anything. What? You know, I'm going to answer you and then I, I'm going to answer you in our version of Pig Latin. Anything always. Ha! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so I am excited, as you can tell, that we're going to get this ball rolling. I'm I am very excited. Seriously, I'm very excited to help you out there. Those who have been in my inbox, those who have um, supported the Look Better in Writing podcast, those who have supported and subscribed to the YouTube channel, I appreciate you. And more than anything, I am, I am honored to serve you. I'm honored to help you get your words out there because as Avery mentioned, um, you want your words to live outside of you. You want your words to live past you. So we are definitely in this thing together. We're in Aww. this thing together. And yeah, man. before we officially get out of here, Avery, if you can mm -hmm. close out and leave any words that you want to to the people, as well as let people know where they can um, find you and get into your services. Because, hello, a lot of you guys may have books, but you need to get them marketed and promoted in this season. So thank you again for having me. And shout out to everyone who's writing a book. Listen, this is not a easy undertaking. So shout out to you. Yeah. You're already winning. If you've made the commitment to say you're going to try, you, you're already won. Just yep. keep trying. And eventually you'll have a book and a baby and it will be awesome. So again, uh, my name is Avery Lady A, aka Lady A Global. Um, I am your favorite purpose pilot. I help you to manifest your vision and add some prosperity to your purpose. Um, so yes, you can find me Lady A Global across all social media at Lady A on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, just type in uh, Lady A Global. It will pop up. Um, also, if you want to email me directly, it's Lady A at Lady A Global.com. Um, you are definitely welcome to send me questions. I am a consultant. I'm a creative consultant by trade, which simply means that I help you, again, harness that energy, harness that creativity, and make it make sense for other people, right? We can have ideas ourselves, but if they're not able to be grasped by other people, then they're not going to want to buy into it. They're not going to want to pay into it, right? So um, that is what I would love to do for you all, whoever reaches out. Um, we might have to do a tag team special here for you guys who are working with Ayla to write a book, yeah. but you want to yeah. work on your brand and work on your marketing, I definitely okay. want to help you do that. Um, so Nia and I will talk offline about how to get that to you. But yeah, I would totally love to help you build that brand like we talked about. You need a support system. You need marketing. And as I said, if you're not ready to market, you're not ready to publish. So I would love to help you get ready to market your book so that, that again, your book outlives you and that your words have immortality in, by way of writing yes so guys i will leave all of avery's links um in the description of the podcast as well as the youtube video and we will catch you guys hopefully next week everybody yeah. be safe and always 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 remember to look better in writing all right bye guys bye